Hello, Peter from Cyrus Gaming Spot here, and I'm joined by my two friends to talk about Final Fantasy 16 today. And those two friends that join me are Surface3090 and uh, Daniel Santos, who I'll be calling Shintai because. Again, that's I don't need <laughs> anyway. That's the name I know for a while, That's the name I know for him for my whole life. So yeah, I'm I'm, I, I'm stuck with that name. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> okay. So Final Fantasy 16. The this is like at the time of this recording, still the most recent Final Fantasy game to come out. I think. Yeah. Probably be that way for yeah. a while. I don't mm. I don't see 17 coming out for at, at least like mm. a few years. Mm -hmm. Might possibly have Korean kids by then, we'll see. So, this game, like, like it's something, alright? Let's see. <laughs> controversial, to say the least. Controversial, controversial. For, controversial for some people. And mm -hmm. some people really love it, so. Me and Sora already talked about it, kind of, um, before on the podcast. I didn't beat the game, we just, like, gave our first impression on it, I think. Yeah, and I was only about like a quarter of the way through it at the time too, so yeah. we couldn't really give our entire thoughts. I guess I should do the usual and just talk about our history with Final Fantasy before actually getting to Final Fantasy 16. Especially since like some people's problem with Final Fantasy 16 is the legacy of Final Fantasy itself and how they don't think it jives with Final Fantasy 16. At least that's what I think many people's problems are, just looking from the outside inward because i'm not really a final fantasy player like uh, yeah i i, I, I personally like you're talking about the people who are saying it's not a real final fantasy game yeah yeah anyway yeah, I, I personally find that to be very shallow okay. criticism of the game for me i've started final fantasy really at final fantasy x and then like a uh, kind of play consistently a bit uh, uh, from then on, like strangely enough, Final Fantasy Tactics was my first Final Fantasy game I played and beaten. And I loved that game. But I never played any other Final Fantasy into X. And then after X, I played X, X2, 12, 13, 14, a lot of 14, a lot of 14. <laughs> to say the least, 15 and 16, and that, and I, I came back to play Final Fantasy 7. But that's basically all the Final Fantasies that I've played and beaten. I played Ben Final Fantasy VIII, but saying I played that is generous because I've only gotten up to Ifrit and then quit. And that was when I was oh, yeah, playing. Yeah, Ifrit is nothing. <laughs> I know. I yeah, know. Yeah, it's like 30 minutes. <laughs> that's, that's why I say it was generous to say that I played it. <laughs> but yeah. But overall, like, so yeah, I'm not really a Final Fantasy player. But, I mean, no, I'd say you are. You've played like yeah. about, a good amount. You played a bunch of games, so yeah. I, I, I like I play what people consider the modern era Final Fantasy, as they say. Sure, but I don't think yeah. that discounts anything. Yeah. So, what uh, what are you guys' history with Final Fantasy? Uh, you want to go first, Sword? Uh, yeah, sure. So. Mine goes back way, uh, way back when I was uh, eight years old. So we had first picked our, our PlayStation 2, and uh, my dad was, he doesn't really game much now, but back back in the day, like when he had more time, he was able to, we, we hooked it up in our living room. And <clears throat> he got Final Fantasy X like when it came out. And at the time, my eight-year-old brain was so fascinated by what I was seeing. Like I had never, in my entire life, I up to that point, I'd never played a game where like you actually like took turns fighting to me that was completely alien and and like the the emphasis on story and you're watching it like a movie and you know like that that was all so new and i think that pretty much solidified my fascination with rpgs in general and uh you know I, obviously my my little tiny year old brain didn't know what the hell i was looking at but it was such a unique experience to me that it just stuck with me and pretty much it spiraled from there and then years went on i had picked up the ones i've played i played Aside from 10, I played 13, I beat 15, obviously now 16. And recently, I actually uh, downloaded some of the uh, pixel remasters of the old games. I never beat them, so I actually recently beat the pixel remaster of Final Fantasy 4, which was the first time I ever beat that game. And then oh, cool. 7, 8, and yeah, yeah, it was it was, it was cool to, to revisit it, or to, to visit it and see kind of the foundation of the series. And um, so yeah, that, and then I, I also I played Crisis Core Reunion. That was also my first time playing Crisis Core. 
Oh and, yeah, I uh, played for Christ Corving as well. Yeah, yes. And then uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake, and I think that's pretty much all the ones I beat. That's a pretty sizable amount, I'd say. So <laughs> I, I'm not, I'm not saying it's like I'm not like in love with the series as much as some of the other, like some other franchises, like like Tales. I love <laughs> Tales. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I've, I always got to default to that one. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, I have a pretty long history with it, like throughout kind of kind of my life. So it's it's a series that I that's near and dear to me, you know. So, but yeah, that's pretty much a. Pretty much my little <laughs> backstory mm-hmm. for Final Fantasy. Cool, cool. I'm like, I guess for me, technically speaking, the first one I ever played was Mystic Quest when I was like three years old. I don't, I, I, mm-hmm. I don't know if that really counts, <laughs> but <laughs> it's something. <laughs> it's something. Um, I, I think my first real Final Fantasy game was Nine. That one I played a lot when i was in fifth grade i was pretty young at the time and i loved it i thought the game was great and it's still one of my favorite games in the series technically before that i had actually played demo discs of final fantasy 7 and 8 and i thought they were really cool too and i think playing those demo discs and seeing that 9 was coming out that was what made me ask for it for a gift then 10 came out and 10 was like a really big deal. 10 was like, holy shit. 10 was like. It's like a technical marvel at the time. Pretty yeah. Much. Yeah. Yeah. It really was for the time. Like it was the most impressive game that had ever come out at the time. Um, Fun fact. That game. Yeah. Is, uh, so my brother also loved it when, uh, when we played it. And we actually fought over the control to say to see who would play it. <laughs> uh, that that's was a fun. lot. Yeah. I think after I beat 10, that's when I started going back and I was like, okay, I'm going to go and play 7, I'm going to play 8. I played uh, through Tactics and uh, eventually at some point I went back and I got the GBA version of 1 and 2. Never never beat 2 because 2 kind of blows, but I did beat 1. I beat the PS1 version of 4. Let's see, eventually 13 came out and I beat that not a fan Uh, (laughs) um when 14 initially came out i was not interested but now i've put like 1300 hours into it so yeah (laughs) i think i need to get on that train you know know what's kind of funny i think for said this before but i think like oris uh greg uh, bison and uh they got me to go all play final fantasy 14 at the same time which was not the heaven, not 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 like at Realm Reborn when the launch, but like in the patches. Heaven's Ward? Yeah, no, like the patch leading up to Heaven's Ward. They brought me into it thinking like, oh, might as well get uh, try to get somebody to play with us. But I'm the only one who actually stuck with it afterwards. For and time. it's funny because I I think I remember that and I didn't participate at all. Yeah. <laughs> Only to like come back to the game years and years later, mm-hmm. and I've fucking <laughs> caught up in the MSQ and mm-hmm. you know just just poured so many fucking hours into it. But yeah, um, let's see. I tried playing 15. Every time I tried playing that game, I just bounced off it. It's and, it's uh, not it's not that great. <laughs> yeah, and I, now I've beaten 16. I say 15 is better than i thought given its long development cycle i mean okay it given the development hell i will say yeah. it could have turned out a lot worse yeah I'll, I'll give it that but like if you look at it as is it's just so yeah so flawed it's i mean so it could have been much worse like there are games that had long development cycles of development hell that turns out worse than final fantasy 15 I think. oh yeah, yeah no no for sure yeah i think the best way to describe it is better than you think mm-hmm. but not as you'd hope mm-hmm. <laughs> It should be the, the subtitle for it. But yeah, so Final Fantasy 16. That's like after Final Fantasy 15, I think they had to like like Final Fantasy 15 is incredibly mixed in the community. I think incredibly mixed. I, I, I'd argue more positive than negative, but there yeah. is a a because that's the thing with negativity. Yeah. It's like. People are louder about the things that they mm-hmm. dislike compared to the things that they like. Mm-hmm. 
I think that's yeah, just yeah. a general thing. So it it always feels like the uh, the negativity is worse than it is. Mm. So Final Fantasy 16. I think Sword said this before or just now, but we were recording. But Final Fantasy 16 felt like a response to Final Fantasy 15. Yes. Like like even though like Final Fantasy 15, I think I think it sold relatively well. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think I remember it selling yeah. well when it first came out. But like the reception to it was like, like a bit mixed, I think. Even though it was like, it's probably more positive than negative, but it's, it probably like did felt a lot more mixed in comparison to other Final Fantasies that came out at the time, I think. That Absolutely. The, like, that's, yeah. my, that's my impression, at least. Mm -hmm. and, I uh, mean, at the same time, though, 13's... 13, I think, also sold well, yeah. but... The reception to it was, I'd mm -hmm. say, even more negative yeah. than 15. Yeah. I guess it's just like, it's like 13 and 15. The reception wasn't like the hottest thing, so they felt like they need to make Final Fantasy 16 hit the ball out of the park in order to like reinvigorate that feeling that people used to have when getting a new Final Fantasy game, at least a new yeah. mainline Final Fantasy game. And let's, actually... let's not forget that even though 14 is great now, when oh, it initially shit. came out, what it, was, yeah, it, was, it was a train wreck, from what I remember. The MMO that required basically a reset. So via... Even though technically 14 is a success now, if you think mm -hmm. of it, just purely in terms of when these games released, yeah. critically speaking, 13, 14, 15, three mainline Final Fantasy games in a row were lacking in terms mm -hmm. of the critical reception. Compare it, that to 16. Yeah. And it's funny, I mean, it's funny you bring out 14 because like 14 was a train wreck at its launch. And you know, <laughs> what's the one thing they did in order to like, what's what, one of the many things they did in order to uh, not make it a train wreck? Reset it and change the director to Yoshi P. And you know, yeah, who's, you know, <laughs> and you know who's the director to Final Fantasy 16? <laughs> Yoshi no, P. no, he's not directing 16. He produced 16. Yeah, oh, produced, uh, yeah, but still. He, like, he's involved in it, so it's, it's still pretty so funny. The, the director of 16 is actually the director of Last Remnant. Mm -hmm. Huh, okay. At least. Uh, I've never played. I've never personally played that game, so. I would say know. at least Final Fantasy 16 not... doesn't run like a slideshow. Like a slideshow? <laughs> It's it's not it's not worth your time. <laughs> it's it's like it might be worth your time on PC now, I guess maybe, but it definitely wasn't worth your time when you first played it on the 360. No, that was that was borderline unplayable. Mm -hmm. But like, so again, not even getting into our personal thoughts on 16 yet, mm -hmm. but like just looking at the critical reception of 16, I think that's what they were looking for. Yeah, because uh, 16. Even though fans um, have been kind of mixed on the game, cr the critical reception out the gate was unanimously uh, positive. Yeah. In, in, in a way that it hasn't been in a long time. I'm sure, yeah, I honestly can't remember the last time it was as positive as it was, at least for the critical reception. Yeah. Like, I think, I do think 12 was critically received, even though that was also mixed by the fan base. But I think yeah. that. 12, 12 yeah. did. Yeah. And I, and I would say in. For 12 at least especially when that remaster came out i saw a lot of people now it's anecdotal but like i yeah. did see a lot of people come around with the game a lot of people changed their mind on 12 when the remaster came out and they were all like oh i was too young yeah. when this game came to out be, I didn't to be honest to be honest the international version does fix a lot of problems the original 12 has yeah, yeah, it does. It, it makes it a lot more... In like, regards uh, to, like, the license board and how there's, like, a fast-forward option. For sure, but yeah. I'm just saying that... Um, I, I, I did see a lot of people say that, yeah. in particular, like, they appreciated the story a lot mm -hmm. more because they were too young to really appreciate the story of 12 at the time. I've mm -hmm. only played, like, a chunk of 12, personally, so I can't comment oh, okay. on it. Too, but... Like, I played but, 12 and the remaster, so... Mm. Yeah, I did play the original and the remaster, but not to completion. I need to get around to that. Mm. I still miss like how the B story is a downgrade in the remaster, though. 
or into oh do you mean like the the lack of the how they got rid of the 2d art for the yeah. monsters that I mean yeah oh, yeah that was like really gorgeous artwork and they just use like generic 3d models that's yeah kind of lame. <clears throat> oh that's a bummer yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. like coming back to final fantasy 16 i do find it interesting how people say final fantasy 16 doesn't feel like final fantasy game when final fantasy 15 came out with an action combat system as well yeah so and not to mention final fantasy 7 remake yeah also has an action-based combat system mm -hmm. yet i don't see as much vitriol mm -hmm. about that compared to 16 right like 16 a lot of people were really upset about it in yeah. a way they weren't for 15 mm -hmm. and 7 remake and i don't understand that i guess like final fantasy 15's like combat system did involve still some menu uh integration to it which does make it feel sort of like kingdom hearts i guess i don't know i doubt i'd never play kingdom hearts so there's just lo looking you, at it ju just play kingdom hearts 2. No, okay I tried playing Kingdom Hearts 1, but I couldn't get past tar the Tarzan level. Oh yeah, that, that was... Let's cool. play Kingdom Hearts 2. Yeah, okay. So, like, <laughs> it, like, even though Final Fantasy XV action uh, combat system is action-y, it does, like, it, it still felt like within the realms of uh, Square Enix main game, just because uh, people would probably play Kingdom Hearts as well. 16 is probably different. And that it, um, they got one of the developers for, or one of the guys who work on DMC5, I think, the yes. combat system to work yep. on Final Fantasy 16. And so, like, the combat system is, is much more in line with an uh, action. A character action Yeah, game. a character action game, essentially, yeah. Like Devil May Cry, Bayonetta, Nier Automata. Um, like, those sort of action games. Yeah which i think is both a positive yeah. and a negative for ff16 mm -hmm. for the simple fact that combat wise it is uh, particularly in terms of the pure mechanics if we're just looking at the raw mechanics themselves it is definitely a step up when compared to other recent square enix action yeah. games however when compared to something like a devil may cry mm -hmm. or a bayonetta it doesn't quite reach those heights mm -hmm. And I think that would have been fine if the game were more challenging. And I think that's the real issue. I don't think that the game is brain dead per se, but I look, I would say I say this: Final Fantasy yeah. 16 is way too forgiving for the type of challenge that there is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I agree. I I think one change in particular that would have made a big difference in making the game more challenging would be to do the dark souls thing and make it so that using a potion was an animation mm -hmm. that alone would make a huge difference because one of the easiest things you can do is while you're in the middle of a long animation of clive like sending out like giant you know bolt of electricity or you know uh the, the long like odin like sword swinging animation mm. you could just like down potions and just mm. like top off your health and you know just keep on fighting just simply adding uh an animation of him just having to stand still for a bit and drinking it would uh, would make the game more challenging by default i just i like i follow the game was too easy so i just don't use potions mm. at all in the game when i was playing through it first but that's a self-imposed yeah. challenge yeah and I, like and strangely enough it works better than you think because they like if you have full potions on you if you don't use it and any potion you get on the field it automatically heals you so like at that point it, it actually kind of feels like devil may cry game in terms of like finding red orbs within the area you're progressing as you get through the levels and i think that actually makes the game feel better to play if you're like uh at least somewhat adequate at these type of character action games at least that's what i thought i mean yeah i hear you and that yeah. that's cool and that may that makes sense mm -hmm. but I, I, again i i'm still not down with that because yeah. it is a self-imposed yeah. challenge and there should be mm -hmm. more done on the games side yeah. to, to make the game more challenging. Like, like I think the there should be, I, I think there should be more limitations to how items are used in the game. 
the, the only times I felt meaningfully challenged in the mm -hmm. game was when I did an S tier hunt mm -hmm. or when I did the Chronolith trials, and mm -hmm. that was pretty much it. Yeah. I also probably say, like, the reset mechanic is really, really too lenient as well. Because, like, whenever, uh, like, if you die in the game, uh, you come back at it with full potions and full, yeah. like, full resources. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if you had didn't have full potions and resources, and, right? You and might another as well thing, die because you get your yeah, And back. another thing, like uh, if you die at like a multi-phase fight, and you die at, like phase two or phase three, they restart you in that phase with full resources. It takes a lot of the challenge out when you can just like mindlessly just mash through into uh, two phases because there's no like. Uh, punishment for failing in the game, essentially, right. with how the reset so, mechanic works in Final Fantasy 16. Yeah, absolutely. And I, it really makes me scratch my head mm. because I feel like the reason why they did this was because they wanted the game to be as accessible as possible. I find to make it, it as I find it weird. Possible. I find it weird since we're talking about the so called action focus mode, which is supposedly the game's medium mode. But that doesn't feel like like a media mode. No, it feels Oof. like an easy mode. Yeah. But like what I find even stranger about this is this is a post Elden Ring world mm -hmm. in particular. Now granted the game was in development way before Elden Ring came out. Mm -hmm. But like Elden Ring came out and sold like 10 million copies. And granted maybe at that point it was too late to like to change mm -hmm. the game. But like, Elden Ring proved that there is absolutely a market for really challenging games. Mm. And it's just really frustrating that uh, 16 came out and is so piss easy. Like, La it, it's not, again, it's not brain dead. Yeah. It's not like, you know, absolutely no thought goes into what you do. Like, there are, and there are challenging stuff in the game, but it just still feels lacking. Like even discounting Elden Ring, like Devil May Cry 5 on like the set like base difficulty, uh, felt way more challenging on than Final Fantasy uh, 16 no, yeah. uh, action I, focus I totally game. Agree. Totally agree. And it's not like the like the base difficulty in the DMC games are that all that hard. It's just that they're not as easy, as forgiving as um as Final Fantasy 16. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, I just... I'm just wondering if they should have had, like, a ranking system source in this game. I, that... I, I, I just wish the difficulty was handled yeah. differently. Yeah. I, I think that alone mm -hmm. would have made a big difference because, yeah. I especially when I look back at 7 Remake, I feel like mechanically 7 yeah. Remake, I have a lot of problems mm -hmm. with the combat in that game. I still liked the game overall, mm -hmm. but, like, you know, the, the parry doesn't work very well. I think Cloud's dodge is mm -hmm. too stiff and unreliable. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, there there's certain aspects of like how that game mm -hmm. plays that I take a lot of issue with. And 16, by comparison, mechanically is far superior. But like, I if, feel like like because six, Seven uh, Remake yeah. was more challenging, mm -hmm. I ironically had more fun with yeah. it. I say like like mechanically, Final Fantasy 16 does feel a bit better to control and play with. Compared much to better. Seven Remake, a bit, much better. the foundations is there, but like the stuff around the foundation isn't as interesting. So it like it take it uh, makes the whole product feel less fun than it potentially could be if they actually mm -hmm. uh, gave you a like somewhat challenging game to play with. And they do have that. Um, they call it like Final Fantasy mode. But you have to beat the game to even unlock it. Yeah. So you gotta. Play yeah. Video. Like I don't mind that. D DMC does that, but uh, DMC still has uh, actually changing normal mode. Final Fantasy 16 doesn't. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. I, it's like Final Fantasy mode is uh, like a new game plus mode. Yeah, and that's fine. It's like but it's like, it's like yeah. Spar like the Final Fantasy mode is basically some Sparta. That's basically like the equivalent of it, I think. The f action focus mode is it really action focus? <laughs> it doesn't really feel that way. And I feel like 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 
they made it maybe way too accessible in some regards and people are just gonna say oh you just don't want an accessible game no there is an accessible like if you want accessibility uh, there's a mode for that specifically for that yeah they called yeah. it like, the story difficulty yeah. i think it was called that yeah. that's the accessibility I just, yeah i just don't see the problem of having a game that offers more challenge to you rather than just giving you a bunch of uh, options that just make the game easier for you. At least that's my thought on it. Yeah, no, no, I, I agree. No, yeah, it's... It, accessibility is not the issue. The yeah. issue is that the game does not meaningfully challenge yeah. you. And it is disappointing mm -hmm. because mechanically this game does have some neat stuff going on. Mm -hmm. And there are parts of the game that are really, really fun, mm -hmm. but... It's not as consistently enjoyable as yeah. it could have been had the game provided more uh, meaningful challenges or at least tweaked certain aspects of the design. Like I said, just adding a, a simple mm -hmm. like animation of Clyde drinking mm -hmm. potion, that alone would have made a huge difference. Not being able to spam potions in, in the middle of like shooting out a fucking giga flare or something like hey man imagine if all fast 16 has tails item system that would have been okay i think yeah something like that it's throwing up the item and then like after there afterwards like 15 seconds you yeah. can't yeah. use it mm -hmm. that that would have made a difference mm -hmm. but I, I don't want to be too negative because again mm -hmm. like i do think that the Ignoring the difficulty, mm -hmm. the mechanics are fun. I I still feel like they could have done more with it, but mm -hmm. it's still fun to play. Like I, I what you're I saying really, there's like missed potential because like yeah, it could have been like like the options you have feels overkill for what uh, what the game is offering in terms of its challenge. I think is all we're saying. I think yeah, there's like Odin. Them. I feel like mm -hmm. Odin breaks the game just mm -hmm. like. Just, just fucking fill up the meters and then can Zetsu and everything, and everything dies. And mm -hmm. it's like, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. It just trivializes every every encounter yeah. from that point forward. Even like the, some of the super bosses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just it's so fucking strong. Mm -hmm. And and it's a shame because I do have a lot of fun like like juggling between the icons that I chose and you and managing the cooldowns and it's like there, there's a lot of fun to be had like like we like we all said like like mechanically speaking the game is very solid but like, it just it, like you can't there take is the options advantage. to like make cool combos in mm -hmm. Final Fantasy 16 the problem is that there's just no reason to because a uh, enemies die too quickly so. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, you, you juggling them doesn't really do much. And B, uh, strangely enough, I think some enemies just... Some enemies makes it impossible for you to interact with the, with the mechanics you have. Just because you can't really juggle them. And uh, speaking of like um, enemies that die too quickly, like basically if it's an enemy that doesn't have a stagger meter, it's going to die like in... Like three seconds. Like, yeah. It's the only time you'll you'll ever have to take advantage of, of like your full capabilities of all your moves is if it's a uh, it's like an enemy with a stagger meter. Those are mm -hmm. like those are like the true enemies where any other enemy is like fodder. Yeah. yeah. So I have a theory, and I think the reason why the game might be so easy is because of the stagger meter. Mm -hmm. I think what might have happened is the way that 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 mechanic works is that it's. It can be very. It, it could have made it so I that. I feel like, like I think the problem to it is like the stagger meter. It, it's constant. It doesn't drop down. Whatever you do, so you can be as passive as you can. Because when I first saw the stagger meter, I thought it was going to be like Final Fantasy Thirteen and Seven Remake, where you had to keep constant pressure on it, and then you and then which would get you to be aggressive as well as m making sure you dodge correctly in time. But that's not yeah, the like case. Yeah, it's, it's static. It's that like it, it's. It, it, but that's not the case in sixteen. Like it just steadily builds up. It doesn't go back down at all. Which like yeah. it allows you to just play as passively as you can and just like turtle up sometimes. Which like but can. The, 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 the uh, point that I was gonna make though was mm -hmm. I think it could have led to the enemies being too damage spongy. Yeah. And well, I think there may have been a. Uh, 
an earlier build of the game where that mm. was the case mm. and i think they may have realized mm. that they made uh the the enemies health pools too big mm -hmm. and may i don't know if it was like a last minute thing or what but like it could have been that they chopped off mm -hmm. like huge portions of health off the enemies this is just speculation mm -hmm. of course i don't i don't know shit obviously but like i i just feel like the stagger meter as a mechanic lends itself mm -hmm. to enemies having too much health mm -hmm. due to the way that the mechanic you know how it works yeah i, I think maybe them realizing that they're trying to compensate for for not having the enemies feel too damage spongy and then mm. reducing the health and then we have enemies that are too easy to defeat as a result yeah. and it's hard to, to find that right balance mm -hmm. it's a, it's like damned if you damned if you don't just yeah. have the stagger meter or don't it doesn't really matter it's going to you're going it's going to have its own its own set of issues mm -hmm. for sure Personally, I'm not a super big fan of the stagger meter because it just what ends up happening for me is I will try to conserve most of my attacks until I deplete the the, the stagger meter. And then mm. that's when I just unload all yeah. of my attacks rather than using them more naturally throughout the fight and using them for situations that I think are more appropriate. For me, like, I mostly like for stagger, like for building up stagger. I just mostly use the counter mechanics and the like the that the game provides me, like with Garuda's counter or Titan's counter. I just do that to build oh, up yeah. stagger. A lot. I, I, yeah, uh, I forget the name of it, but Titan has one counter mm -hmm. where like uh, you basically do like the JoJo punch. Yeah, uh, that melts mm -hmm. uh, like how far is in stagger meters. And when they're on stagger, I build a Bahamas thing by just dodging around, and then and then when they and then unleash it, and then I stagger them and just unload every damaging uh, icon ability that I have. And like I always reserve my uh, whatever they called it, the devil trigger yeah. or whatever I forgot what it was called, but yeah. uh, I always save that when, when the enemy was stagger. I wait for my uh, bar, the stagger meter to go down, and then I would just wail on it. Actually, that. I actually save that as like uh, emergency health reserve. But that's just because of how I played the game, you know? Yeah, yeah. Man, can I just say that the even though everything surrounding, like when you when you unlock the Devil Trigger mm -hmm. ability, everything surrounding that was really great and cool yeah. and I loved it. But the one thing I didn't like was press L3 and R3 to accept the truth. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that part. Yeah, yeah, kinda... yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, are you fucking serious? <laughs> that's so dumb. <laughs> like, yeah, what a weird little like, weird. Everything about that cutscene was was great. It was like, oh, there there was so much like, it's like emotional know, and, and like, like a lot of. It was so emotional, and mm -hmm. it was like Clive like coming to terms with being in denial and him, like accepting what he had done, and it's like, oh, it was so great, and it's, and then they they just. He's accepting. Down on the airlock, yeah. stick, accept the truth. He needs like, to. <laughs> he needs to accept his shadow, his inner self, by pressing <laughs> L three and R three. <laughs> You're me, and I'm you. <laughs> accept the truth. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, what would it be without a little quick time event there? I don't, like. I just feel like most of the like quick time events, like door pushing, and yeah, stuff, like it's a little it, it feels unnecessary. Yeah. Just open the damn door, Clive. God damn yeah. it. I, I, I wasn't like super bothered by stuff like that. I was mm -hmm. just kind of like, oh, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But like the, the quick time events, like during boss fights and stuff, like, th like they're, they're just they're, like, they're, there's no point even having them because they give you like, like 10 straight seconds to do it. They give you like such a generous window and it's, it's always like the same, like two buttons. So it's kind of like whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I wasn't like bothered by them because. I remember when quick time events were really bad, mm -hmm. like yeah. in God of War or like the original release of, of the of War. Or like Heavenly Sword or something like that. Yeah, that's when like quick time events were like actively terrible. You know, like. Never forget. By comparison, this is just like, yeah. oh, whatever. Never, like, I don't even yeah. think about it. It's never, like it's not even worth complaining about. Never yeah, forget. Yeah, even... Never forget Resident Evil's 4 statue run. <laughs> Dude, I have but yeah, like, like they're just like they're just there and it's yeah. kind of like whatever. It's not even a big deal. I I have nightmares of like 
playing Resident Evil 4 on the GameCube uh -huh. and that fight with Krauser <laughs> where and the the buttons would keep changing. I if know. You, if you if you died and you restarted that, <laughs> it would restarted the whole thing and then like give you different button prompts. Yeah, it would be different button prompts. It's so annoying. Especially annoying for me. That I'm playing on a PS5 controller and it shows the uh, Xbox buttons. Oh <laughs> no, that's, that's the worst. <laughs> but yeah, coming back to Final Fantasy 16. Um. Uh. But yeah, like overall, I think like the major problem with Final Fantasy Sixteen's combat is the balancing. Uh, essentially, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Like things are like way too easy. Like, but I think the mechanic itself is still interesting. I would say like it does take a while for things to get going because like Clive's base move set and the stuff he's do does feel a bit limited yeah yeah i agree with that i mm -hmm. feel like i i i felt like there should have been more yeah. to his toolkit like i get what they were going yeah. for with like okay as you play why the doesn't, game and you, why you doesn't know, he I, have a launcher on his own why yo yeah that, why? i did think that was kind of weird too like mm -hmm. you, you basically have to like uh either use torgle mm -hmm. or you have to use a charged air attack in order to launch enemies. Oh, uh, you can also do a charge, um, a magic attack too, which will launch them up. Yeah, yeah, true. Mm -hmm. But it was, I don't know. It, it, it is it, like it does feel very, thought, like Clive feels really incomplete until he get like two or three icons going on for him. Yeah, I think. You were gonna say something, yeah. Ford? Um, oh, I was gonna say, like, on the topic of the launch, like, all, all these these other methods, they feel like, like, really counterintuitive. Like, it's just not necessary to get, like jump through kind of these, these yeah. hoops. Like, it doesn't have, feel like, like it doesn't feel natural launching opponents of Clive like it does with Dante or Nero. Right. Yeah. And if we're on the topic, yeah, of, especially uh, especially if you're doing like with the charge magic explosion, like even if you do charge them up, unless you're using Phoenix, you have no way to reach them there unless you like time jump around there but then you might be too far away so you know and it doesn't look it's not like Clive has streak where he can like uh, do a stinger move in the air like Nero does so overall like there's some like, some part of Clive's initial kit that does feel incomplete in regards to how you handle it felt like they focused way more yeah. on the iconic abilities yeah and not mm -hmm. enough on just what clive can do on his own mm -hmm. like you know why why only use a, a sword why yeah. why not give him like a spear or something yeah. why not give him and he only you know, has one combo mo one move on the air which is just pressing square again mm -hmm. it's square over and over again like he doesn't really have that many type of moves he can use with his sword. Yeah, and you know, while I do kind of like the idea of the magic burst of like, mm -hmm. you know, having good timing when you're pressing square and triangle, it's like you know, it, it's something I I mostly kind of ignored. There's no like benefit to it. It's just another type of attack you can do. Yeah, I the. Mo what I kind of defaulted to was I would just do the normal combo mm -hmm. and then at the end I would add the burst for like an extra yeah. attack. You know what gets me? Like, I'm surprised in the ranking system, like individual ranking system, you know, like Devil May Cry with the style meter. Isn't there the arcade mode? Yeah, there is the arcade mode, but I'm surprised it isn't something like that in the base game just because the, you keep getting these like the modifiers when you do an attack and giving like certain stars to it. When I first saw that, I thought the game would rank you at the uh, end of like we beat a boss, but it doesn't. And it, it feels I think like that determines like your XP. I yeah. think it like I, I think the more you do stuff like that, it gives you like an does XP it? bonus. It I, doesn't. Yeah. If it does, it doesn't feel that way. No, I don't. I don't think you really feel yeah. the effects of it much. Yeah, which is unfortunate. And, like, and that sort of mechanic would be useful in you uh, getting you to mix up your uh, attacks more, but it doesn't. So like you get into the mindset of just doing the most effective thing you can do, which is just 
mashing square with uh, Clive with his base moveset. Or, you know, like I said, just emptying the stagger meter and yeah. just dumping all your yeah. abilities. Mm -hmm. Let, it's like, oh, you're, you're staggered? Okay, let mm -hmm. me do a Giga Flare. Let me do, like, uh, rem removes, like, giant like electrical strike let mm -hmm. me do that uh the flames of rebirth or whatever it's called you know mm -hmm. like but yeah it, yeah the more i think about it the more i feel like the stagger meter holds the game back because mm -hmm. those abilities aren't given the opportunity to have a more practical utility mm -hmm. you're not really thinking so i mean not 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 like you never think about this but in you know it could have opened up more opportunities for you to think okay i'm going to use this ability because it's useful in this situation mm -hmm. rather than think to yourself well no i haven't depleted the stagger yet mm -hmm. so i'm going to hold on to it so, so i can spam it mm -hmm. but yeah but like once clive does have his icon abilities i do think he does play really well once he get like various icon builds because like the he has a lot of nifty icon builds that like give some sort of utility to it like i think like, no, good, yeah, like i'm not saying they don't have utility yeah i'm just saying the stagger meter disincentivizes you yeah like I, i'm talking about like the icon abilities rather than not, not icon abilities the normal abilities like once you get garuda's claw it makes things feel a lot more fun to me Especially oh, since, yeah, yeah. Garuda alone like makes the combat exponentially better. Yeah. Just, just right from there. Yeah, because like you use her claw to stay like down certain enemies once they reach a certain stagger um, bar, the uh, build up, or you can use it to on enemy to either get them to uh, to bring them to you, like in your arm in Devil May Cry four and five, or if they're too heavy, you can use it to propel yourself upwards. And that's really useful in terms of like dodging ground based pound attacks. I also love Titan's block. Yeah. That was so much fun. Like yeah. I'm not even someone who really likes timing based like mm -hmm. parry mm -hmm. mechanics, but to be fair, it, the, it, the game's pretty mm -hmm. easy. So the, the uh, parry window was pretty mm -hmm. lenient. Mm -hmm. So even I was able, even I'm terrible at that stuff, mm -hmm. but even I was able to really enjoy it because, mm -hmm. you know, I would see an attack coming, I'd fucking block it and then mm -hmm. counter with the, with the Titan punches. And it felt great. Like the game did mm -hmm. a really good job. When you get that perfect block, yeah. the game like stops everything. It's got this great sound effect. Like mm -hmm. it, it really makes you feel like, oh shit, I just blocked it. Mm -hmm. I also, I got a lot of use out of Shiva's uh, dodge ability. Mm -hmm. Like, in, if you time it right, it can freeze enemies around you, giving you an opportunity to like wail on them. I thought, I thought, I thought that her icon ability was pretty yeah. useful. Like, I, think I, I feel like the one of the best things about this game was the Chronolith Trials, yeah. and not even just because they provided a challenge. But I like they how, really like, I like how they get you to like they limit what type of abilities you can use, yeah. and like get force you to be able to, to think on how you should exactly. use those abilities to get uh, as much points as you can, because you need a certain point threshold in order to like uh, to up the timer so you can actually beat the chrono trials yes exactly that's what i was gonna say mm -hmm. they they all those trials forced me to realize how useful all of the yeah. the, the abilities are mm -hmm. and because at first i would i would ignore them i'll be like ah that looks lame add ah, whatever why would i use that but the chronolith mm -hmm. trial showed me no all of the abilities are good in their own way they all had their own it's the chrono tries that get bo the the phoenix move where you can tear bounce back any projectile that doesn't feel useful but like the payoff to that feels really good and i only discovered yeah. that because of the chrono trial no yeah exactly yeah. so i think the chrono trial does a great job and not only providing you challenge uh, providing challenge for the game, but also in terms of getting you to use maybe certain abilities that you don't uh, think of using. I, no, absolutely, yeah. I agree. And I, and it's good that like, I think they come with preset levels as well, so like you don't even have to invest in them. They come pre-packaged. The game gives you a chance to play around with them, to get you to try to use them in a way that will get you to uh, effectively beat the trial. And I think that's, that's an interesting uh, thing to do in this game. Since like the game is, like the combat system 
is very much uh, based around using different iconic abilities. Totally agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright, should we talk about the, the story? Uh, let's see. <laughs> what, <laughs> yeah, talk what about you think, what, what do you think? I think we should talk about the side quests as well. Or you want yeah. to? Uh, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you think I mean, of the side quests? I mean, they're they're, to me, they're just, yeah, they're, they're typical MMO fetch quests. Yeah. Although I will say, there is a handful of genuinely, like, um, memorable side quests that have some pretty good stories to attach to them. Yeah. But I think there's the, they're mm -hmm. the exception to the rule, unfortunately. I, I agree. They yeah. are, 90% of them are boring, mindless, yeah. go, go here, kill that. FedEx quests, you're just like, like delivering shit. Like it's. I think there are not... some interesting ones, like the one where you're trying to find this girl's pet, and you figure out what that pet actually is. Yeah, yeah. yeah you see, that that's that's the kind yeah. of stuff I love. But I just wish there was more. Of and then that. there, there's one that I thought was pretty neat, where you're like you are being delivery boy, but you're delivering to the various guys in this village, and then. The end result is you seeing them relaxing and just taking a drink with each other. Oh, and th that's where world building is cool. But you don't really get that most of the time. It's just, most of it is just fetch quests. Yeah. Anyway, right. Which... That's, that's why I say 90% yeah. are bad. Yeah. Not even bad, just mid. Yeah. yeah like, but then there's a few of them, like the one with Torgal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, like probably... I, think, I think almost all the side quests near the end is interesting, but that's because like they involve the, the actual characters you meet in the story. There was um, I remember there was a side quest that really stuck with me at, at the end of the game where I think you go to this town and it's filled with these people that they I, I think they, they want to become what do they call it, Akashic or something. Mm -hmm. and, and then there's this guy who you talk to this guy and then the next day, like I'm so at playing the game, I'm like, well, I'm, sh you know, I'm sure they're going to find a way to save everyone. They're going to uh -huh. convince them not to become a cash and everyone's going to. And then you get you go back to the center of town and they're all zombies. And then mm -hmm. they walk out and they're just yeah. a cashing. I'm like, damn, like that. That's like a Yoko Taro ending to me yeah. right there. Like, I don't know. That, it's that kind of stuff that sticks with me. And like, I, I know I said it before, mm -hmm. but I just wish stuff like that for the psycho was, was more prominent. Like, mm -hmm. like I said, there, it's the exception to the rule. Yeah. Yeah. There are good quests. Mm -hmm. There absolutely are. I just wish those were the only quests yeah. because so many of them are just not that. Hey, man, would you mind delivering food to uh, three different people at the hideaway? Would you mind uh, carrying uh, this block of wood for me? And the... <laughs> like, oh, can you go and get this flower? Mm -hmm. Like it's so so much of it is just so. Eh. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Just it, it, oh, it it's wait. it's exactly like yeah. you said, sword. It's MMO quest. Yes. Yeah. I forgot. We didn't talk about the equipment system or leveling system in the game. It's it's pretty bog standard, yeah. to be honest. It's nothing nothing special. Like it, that's that's another common complaint that I do agree with, honestly, is mm -hmm. the RPG elements in sixteen are so light. Yeah. Uh, like the 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 like I remember when I got later in the game. I, I, I stopped visiting the like uh, ability tree. I didn't need mm -hmm. to spend it. By the time I beat the game, I had like like hundreds of thousands of ability points just racked up that I didn't yeah. need to use. So like it's just yeah the 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 customization for mm -hmm. Clive is very limited and it has extremely bare bones crafting system where all you're doing is just oh we got some materials oh but the numbers go up a little bit mm -hmm. it's just nothing nothing interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The I'm going to push back a little bit on what you said about the skill system. I actually kind of liked it because you are able to master abilities and then you can use those abilities irregardless of the icon it's yeah. attached like to. Like mastering them? Oh, yeah. Mastering them is cool. But I think like the upgrade between them is like pretty it, it doesn't feel that yeah, yeah. strong but like the, the like the, those are good upgrades like that's yeah. nice. But like in general like there's mm. not too much useful like um yeah on the skill trees especially like in the like the icon like the only time i'll the icons i would like upgrade are the ones that i'm just using in the active moment and mm -hmm. then the uh, whenever i i would stop using an, an iconic ability for a better one i would just because i do like how you can like refund your ability points yeah um mm -hmm. like it's not yeah it's like it's not set in stone so that, that's cool so i would just 
I'm like, all right, well, I'm done with this because I got another one. So I'll just take the points back and then mm-hmm. put them in this new one. So that, I mean, that's cool. But um, it's pretty, it's pretty bare bones overall, I'd say. I'm not saying it's like super complex mm-hmm. or anything, but like, yeah. I do think it works for what it is. Mm-hmm. I just feel like we, sh- we needed a different system on top of it mm-hmm. or, yeah. or next to it, right? Like, like, I think, I think that skill system j- could have been left alone. Mm-hmm. And then we have like another thing next to it where this allows you to tweak uh, his stats or something, or this allows you to, or, or, or maybe something as simple as like just using an ability more often mm-hmm. that powers it up or something. I don't know, just some sort of RPG, you know, because that's the big problem a lot of people have. It's the RPG mechanics feel pretty light. Yeah. And it's true. You just level up or you learn new skills mm-hmm. or, or iconic abilities, and that's pretty much it. And I just feel like, yeah, we need a little bit more to make mm-hmm. it feel like you're you're really progressing Clive as a character. Yeah. And then uh, there's the equipment system, which is... It's just there. It's just there. Yeah. Just I will there. say, am I the... Cause, uh, I, so I know they have those timely accessories. Like, was I the only one that used the one for Torgal? Because I just couldn't be asked oh. to manually I not. come in. I used the one where it gives you, like... I, get, I used the Berserker Ring, which gives you, like, a different perfect dodge attack. Oh, okay. That is the only accessory I think that's memorable in the game. The rest is just like, oh, increase, like, reduce the cooldown, increase the power of this iconic ability, mm-hmm. and so on, so on. Most of the equipment, I think, feels pretty boring and really linear. How you get Clive's new swords, like, just get materials you get from quests and in the overworld. I think it's mostly just quests because, and then you just craft them. And like, there's no multiple swords to choose from. There, there's only one good, one definitive upgrade you can get, which can make like the crafting system to feel worthless. So since if you're just going to make it so linear, might as well just put it in the shop. You know, this is what I think, I guess. Yeah, I yeah, no, no, I, yeah, I agree. Equipment system overall, it's pretty, really mid, really mid. Mm-hmm. So it this, is, it is mid. Yeah. Uh, the story. What do you guys think about Final Fantasy 16 story? I, I, I thought it was the strongest part of the game. I think that's where the game was most consistent. Mm-hmm. Um, I had some issues with it, but overall, I think it's definitely, you know, excluding 14, one of the mm-hmm. better stories that we've seen in an FF in a while. Mm-hmm. I say uh, like, I, I liked it overall. I think it's pretty good. I just think there's some parts of it that holds it back, like Ultima as a villain. Yeah, I 100% yeah. agree. Yeah, yeah, I think was, Ultima was cool. is the worst part of the game. Yeah. By far, not even mm-hmm. close. Mm-hmm. He's like one of the worst Final Fantasy villains, period. Yep. He's got so little going on yeah. for it. You compare him to Sephiroth, you compare him to Kuja, you know. Uh, I haven't really played FF6, to be fair, but like based on what I know of Kefka, mm-hmm. like all these villains blow him out of the water. Like mm-hmm. they all have charisma. They're all interesting. They, you know, Ultima. Uh, the only thing I could say about Ultima is that, oh, you know, his design is kind of yeah. creepy. And I think I don't know. I think I think his origin is kind of interesting. Like the that he's like a hive-minded race kind of. Like that was kind of kind of interesting. I guess, but he, like I when, know, you, when you when you yeah. like, I like the mystery uh, leading up to him. But once he reveals himself and uh, you actually know he's an uh, actual character, like uh, he he's incredibly boring whenever he's on yeah, screen. You know. See, here's, like, here's um, my thing. I feel like the game was at its strongest when it was all about the interpersonal drama between yeah. all these shitty royals and all these people, like. Mm-hmm. I was way more invested in the storyline between Clive, his brother, and their shitty mother mm-hmm. than I was with anything related to Ultima. Yeah. Yeah, I really like that. Yeah, the, speaking of which, Clive's like relationship with Annabella, his mother, like yeah. I, th- I found that so, like that was such great character work for me. Like that was such great, dr- especially like my favorite part with them is like near the, uh, very later mm-hmm. in the game where um, <clears throat> after all that time, Clive and Jill encounter Annabella and they're having this argument. She's talking about like. Well, oh, you know, Phoenix should have chosen you, and oh, why, why is the only son that I love dead and not you? And I was like, damn, this is fucking, like yeah. shit like that is like heavy to me. Mm-hmm. Like that, that was really effective. 
But yeah, uh, like and, I think it, it all came down to her for just like she she just had this weird obsession with yeah. bloodlines. She just mm -hmm. wanted the blood to be pure, mm -hmm. and it's like the most shallow fucking shit. Yeah, like. And she but even like, says straight up like that that the people of a of a kingdom or nation are expendable, and that you could oh you could just rebuild it, but bloodline's the most important. I'm like, no, yeah, like, she mm -hmm. she was just a fucking garbage human being. Mm -hmm. and, but and she's one like, of those characters that like I love to hate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like she's one of those characters that I love to hate. Like I, like I hate her guts, but like, she's like a very like um, not entertaining character. I don't know, like engaging in a way, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah she was engaging because like. Mm -hmm. She's just so hateable. You mm -hmm. just like, you're just like this fucking bitch. Like she can't possibly get worse. She keeps getting worse. <laughs> so she keeps like one upping herself. But I think overall, I think the characters are pretty good in this game. From Clive to, to Jill <coughs> to uh, uh, Dion. I think Dion yeah. is Joshua. actually the, one of the best written characters yeah. in the game. I think mm -hmm. Dion was like. He was such a compelling character, okay. and I felt I don't think he got enough screen time. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I really love Dion, and yeah. I, I wish they would have done more with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really, really, I, I consider Clive to be like one of the top main characters for Final Fantasy, and at least for a while. Like I think mm -hmm. his arc is really well done too. And like, like we were talking about that one scene before where he learns about like what happened with his like what yeah. he did to Joshua and and coming to terms with it and like that was just really great. I would uh, say I like his development came yeah. way faster than I thought though. Yeah, yeah, that was a lot earlier in the game than yeah. I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. But like uh, well, it's it was early in the game but yeah. not for him. Yeah. Yeah, for uh, him, yeah, not for him. Yeah. I mean early in the game was like yeah, I, no. I think it was fine though, just because yeah. like for his character, it, mm -hmm. it, you know, I yeah, think that's but, what matters more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. When you when you consider the context, it's been what was it like thirteen years or something like that. So yeah, yeah. It, it makes more sense contextually. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, yeah, I agree. I feel like my my biggest thing with the story is I feel like the story, not necessarily that it could have ended when. Uh, when you have the fight with Bahamut, mm -hmm. but I feel like the the story, I think that was like the peak of the story. And not to not, not to say like oh the story goes downhill and it turns to shit afterwards, mm -hmm. but I do feel like there was a dip in quality after that point. I do think it picks back up for the ending. I did like the ending quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the ending was uh, that was a uh, hey hard. Yeah, and I also really like. Odin. I liked the King of Walud. Mm -hmm. I thought he was really cool. But I think what kind of... I'm not going to go as far as say taint, but I think what kind of brings down that part of the game for me is that it's more Ultima focused and as a result, that section of the game is kind of like yeah. brought down. I was going to say, I was going to say, after Bahamut, Ultima gets much more focus. And it becomes... Yeah, like, yeah. He, he comes to like in the... He, he's yeah. like the focal point of the story mm -hmm. from that point forward, basically. Yeah. yeah. And again, well, I just feel like where the narrative is at its strongest it's when it's dealing with the political machinations yeah. and it's dealing with the interpersonal drama of the characters mm -hmm. but when it goes when 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 the story kind of falls back in the more typical final fantasy like sort of thing of like oh we got to kill god now yeah. essentially that's when it becomes a lot less interesting i do think like the character drama in this game is the where the game is strongest Especially yes. you see Clyde yes, yeah. deal with like <clears throat> uh, with how he uh, tries to take revenge on what he thinks killed his brother and then come to terms to it and then seeing his relationship with all the characters he encounters again like Jill especially with his uncle Brian I think uh, him meeting ba I love Byron that guy. for the first time yeah, uh, again, again this was a really heartfelt moment Overall, Clive, like, when the story involved Clive and uh, the relationship he has with all these different characters that you meet, it is very compelling, I think. I, yeah, I, th I think the character work is yeah. is one of the best in Final Fantasy. Like, mm -hmm. I, I I adored, like, pretty much all of these characters. Even, like, the lesser ones. Like, I loved Mid and, and Gav and, uh, what was that guy? That is Cooper? awesome. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's the shit. He's, like, your bro. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. oh, and, and I, I feel like the hideaway characters to me felt like kind of a big family like, yeah. Um, yeah, like yeah, felt, yeah agreed. like 
Mm -hmm. like, like, like when they, you know, when they're all talking and then you know, can hear the end with Clive and it's kind of giving a speech about like when he's about to go fight Ultima. And, like, especially, I was like, yeah, like, especially with Sid, who's basically uh, give a lot of uh, development to Clive as well in terms of like yeah. tr trying to get him to have a purpose beyond his revenge, kind of, sort of. And, and I gotta say, for such a, uh, in the grand scheme of things, for kind of a short appearance, like, yeah. Sid is, like, one of the most memorable characters in the game, I think. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel he's, like he's they awesome. killed him off too soon, yeah. honestly. Yeah, like, like, like I, I would've been, I, I wouldn't be, I'm not against them killing him off inherently, like, mm -hmm. but, like, if you if you com compare to, like, Aerith, like, you get a lot of time with Aerith before that scene happens. Mm -hmm. Whereas with Sid, he, he dies, like, you're, you're, like, not even a quarter of the way through. He's like, but... it's like with Dion, like, they don't really have that much screen time once you, like, yeah. like look over the story overall. But, like, yeah, they still, yeah. like, for what they do have, they still come up as uh, really strong characters, I think. So, I heard that originally Final Fantasy XVI was going to be on two discs. Mm -hmm. And they said that they did some trimming mm -hmm. to get it down to one disc. So mm -hmm. that makes me question how much cut content is in this game because mm -hmm. I think that may be the reason why certain elements of the story might feel a little undercooked. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like I love Jill. Mm -hmm. She should have gotten more screen time. Uh, yeah. I love Neon. He should have gotten more screen time. Mm -hmm. I love Sid. He shouldn't gotten more screen time. And I can't help but feel like maybe they did but somewhere along the line, when they were trimming down from two discs mm -hmm. to one, though there were some some stuff there that mm. you know that could have meaningfully added to these characters. I mean, obviously, I don't know. I'm just speculating, but like, I can't help but think like, shit. It feels like mm. there should have been more here, and I think that's really uh, aside from Ultima, which I just don't like as a villain. The only mm. other like real issue that I have with the story. Is it is less what's there and more so what's not there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I could agree with that. Yeah. Because most of what's there is is very well done. There's there's only like a couple of things here and there that I can point to and go, yeah, that was poorly executed. Mm -hmm. Most notably, the thing with uh, what's Titans Koopka 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 when he yeah. captured Jill, and then he. Uh, like that that was like the worst written part of the whole fucking game that part was complete trash like all of a sudden you're fighting this coral and then all of a sudden he just fucking captures jill how how the fuck yeah. did he do that <laughs> and unless and he has he, unless he has teleporting skills that we don't know about that's a bad like that was that was really poorly written mm -hmm. and then and then instead of just killing clive he t he puts him in a jail cell why not just kill him? And, and then I guess I guess he was like, "Gotta you, make you him suffer. Make that, Gotta make him make make suffer." No, you can't even make that argument because he was going to kill Jill mm -hmm. without Clive being there. If you want Clive to suffer, why not have him watch Jill get killed? What are you doing? <laughs> this makes no <laughs> sense. I mean, because the only thing is, like, we, we do know that Ultima needs Clive because he's the mythos or whatever, but mm -hmm. I don't even think Koopka knows that, as far as I can tell. No, I don't think like, he did. So, mm -hmm. I don't think so he therefore, did. yeah, so therefore, there, there should be no reason for him not to kill Clive. I, I strongly feel like that part of the game mm -hmm. was also a, a result of them trimming the game down from two discs to one, because that part just felt so, like, cobbled together. Like, yeah, it was very poor, poorly conceived, for sure. And that's also the point where fucking Torgal transforms. Like, he just so happened to transform at the right time. To, uh, just when know. they needed him. <laughs> like, I was just like, what? There, what is this? <laughs> I, I think, granted, that's like the only part of the game I can think of where, mm -hmm. where it was like that bad. Like, I don't think the game before or after that ever gets like mm -hmm. feels that cobbled together okay. yeah it's just it's just one poorly written mm -hmm. like part i don't think it like puts a like ruins the whole experience. i will say no, yeah. no it's not even a, yeah. honestly it's not even a big deal and i think it makes up for it when you have that scene where clive and koopka are you know they have a face off mm -hmm. and they're like yelling at each other um you know like koopka finds out that clive was actually the one that killed benedicta and now he's like, I can finally have my revenge. And then they fucking, you know, they, they have that great moment. It's like, now you die. And they fucking cut 
between the oh yeah. that, that was so good yeah and he literally cuts Koopa's so hands off that, that was so badass oh i was gonna make a disarming joke <laughs> <laughs> i think a while ago they put out there making a Koopa figure you know what's changeable his hands his hands <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That kind of reminds me of... Uh, we've all seen Madoka Magica, right? Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, so when the movie originally... When they originally released the movie in... Oh, um, I know. I know the ticket. The in theaters, they, they gave out these ticket stubs with Mommy, and you you would have to rip her head off <laughs> as part of the ticket. <laughs> That's so fucked up. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. love it. I love it. So good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. Oh, yeah. I left this out for later since, like, uh, what do you think of the icon battle since I think they epic. hit uh, epic? I, think I loved epic. all of the icon mm -hmm. battles. I loved how, like, as the game went mm -hmm. on, they all ramped up and up mm -hmm. and up and up. Yeah. Um, like, to the like to the point where when you fight Bahamut, you're in mm -hmm. fucking space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's I awesome. I remember I was like, I was like, we're not at the end of the game yet? How are they going to top this? Like, <laughs> I will say that I think Bahama is like the peak of the icon battles. Yeah, it, yeah. it kind of... Even even though they... The, 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 the fight with Ultima was still pretty yeah. good too. Like, I think that that was the peak of the game, period. Like, yeah. I think that, that whole section is just like mm -hmm. the best part of the whole fucking game. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like not only for like for the cinematic ver uh, uh, reasons too, but I think like just gameplay wise, Bahamut has a lot more attacks for you to pay attention to. I think for, there's uh, a lot more going on. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It, when he's in space, like, and you're also switching back and forth between mm -hmm. Ifri and then Phoenix, yeah. And then you you combine into both, yeah. And then you're fighting in space and stuff like mm -hmm. that. It's yeah. It's so much fun. Mm -hmm. it's so epic. You know, like Garuda, I think is fine as introduction. It's very uh, like yeah, it works. Works. Titan. Mm, I like, liked. I liked. I really liked the Titan. I, fight. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was great. Like I think uh, the like the first of the first uh, phase one is pretty fun. Phase two is whatever to me, just because it, like you're just mostly dodging and then doing QTEs throughout the fight. Until you f go into his hand, and then uh, phase three is. Yeah, but cool. that part, that part where you, where Clive like steals, yeah. like uh, if uh, you know, like Titan's hand yeah. and he starts clobbering yeah. with. Like, yeah, that, yeah, that was awesome. Okay. Oh yeah, I, 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 I like. I think the scene is really cinematic. I'm just talking about like uh, the get, what you actually do there. And sure. Th yeah. Sure. Th and then phase three, uh, like it's cool, like for your free fall. But uh, yeah, like, the free fall so yeah. like spectacle wise. Yeah, it's spectacle wise. Great, like, but I, I, like spectacle spectacle wise, I think the icon bats are all great. They they feel very, very they feel very very cool when you do see them in battle, and it, it does. They do a great job of making you feel how gigantic uh, these um, icons are and w how w uh, why they are so valued within like the context of the story and just uh, right. how how one of can change the context of a battle no absolutely yeah i agree uh, uh, like, like i said i think i think the icon battles are like the highlight of mm -hmm. the game in general mm -hmm. they're uh, usually the most interesting story beats happen mm -hmm. um the spectacle is there yeah uh gameplay wise um the earlier ones are not as interesting mm -hmm. but like as it goes on they they get yeah. more and more interesting i think i um, think what gets me about that is like like the titan uh, like where you are uh that titan fight doesn't feel as engaging as your normal gameplay which is why it does feel a bit off at least to me you could see that yeah but i don't know i i, I think the spectacle makes up for yeah, it yeah okay but then, and then Bahamut, I think, is like the best fight, best boss fight in the game. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah no, sure. no one's gonna fight you on that. I don't think. <laughs> Again, I, I just think like that, the, uh, you know, in terms of story, yeah. in terms of tactical, mm -hmm. in terms of gameplay, that that fight with Bahamut mm -hmm. is the peak of the game. Yeah, Odin, um, I think, is cool because it's like a combination of fighting him as Clive and as Ifrit. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I agree with yeah. that. Is, that was definitely that, an interesting was really yeah. my, my only issue with Odin, and this is um, not really a, a, a problem with how the with, with the game itself, but rather like I felt like it would have been more like thematically better if Clive didn't fight Odin by himself. Like I felt like there there was kind of like this running theme mm -hmm. of like people telling Clive, hey, this is not all about you. It's not, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're all in this together, you know, and it, it, it's already been demonstrated that Clive couldn't handle Odin by himself, mm -hmm. but then you just beat Odin anyways. And I understand that the, the uh, in-story explanation is that, well, now he has Shiva's ability and that mm -hmm. gave him the edge. Yeah. But I still felt like, again, more, more in like a thematic consistency sense mm -hmm. it would have been better if maybe joshua was in the fight or if um yeah or you know just mm -hmm. i was gonna say jill but um it would have been yeah, cool you know, to have jill one. it would have been cool to have jill again like when you do the what's that the what's what's that island called the island yeah when you're I trying know. to uh, break the, your second uh, mother crystal I, I forget the name, but yeah. the, I'm just saying that, like, and it didn't have to be anything major, just, mm -hmm. like, having them there to help, mm -hmm. I think, would have uh, hammered in home more the idea, like, mm -hmm. hey, Clive, it's not just about you, mm -hmm. you know, everyone is trying to save the world, mm -hmm. and it's, it's kind of funny, but, like, out of all the Final Fantasy games, like, I feel like this, with the story that they were trying to tell with this yeah. one, Playing as a single player, like a, like a single character game with no other team members, really, mm -hmm. um, kind of works against what the story is, yeah. is trying to tell. I will say it is cool when uh, they get uh, when you get to Ultima and you get like this three v one scenario with uh, <clears throat> that part was with Clive, cool. <laughs> Joshua, and Dion, and then uh, and, uh, they do try disaster. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that that part was cool. Yeah. But even then, it still kind of ends up with just like, mm -hmm. it's it's just up to Clive, mm -hmm. <laughs> which I I was I was kind of like, mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, I felt I felt like that was more so like, the gameplay and the story were mm -hmm. kind of like bumping heads with yeah. each other. They were, yeah, they were at odds. It's like because mm -hmm. the, the gameplay, it's an uh, character action game. But in the story, it's like, oh yeah, well, you have all these comrades. You you know, you're not alone in this. So it's kind of like it's teamwork. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but not really. Not really. <laughs> it's teamwork. I gave you my icon. So uh, do the <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's teamwork. <laughs> I yeah, I will say though, um, one thing I super appreciate about this game is how tasteful and tactful they were about ro the the romance between uh, Clive and Jill, mm -hmm. like. Yeah, that was very yeah. well done. Yeah, I think that was well done, too. I feel like they could have done a little bit more with the romance. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not saying it should have been like Final Fantasy VIII, where it was like a huge focus. I mm -hmm. just would have liked a little bit more. But I at the same that. time, what was there was still yeah. like beautiful. Great. Yeah. Like they, they handled it really mm -hmm. well. My, my only issue is like, damn, it took you like five fucking years with this chick to yeah. finally get with her. Okay, Clive, whatever. Weird. <laughs> kind of weird but you know aside from that again what we saw was that was handled mm -hmm. very tastefully and i yeah. i very much appreciate that very mature and and it felt like a, like it felt earned like when they finally like solidified their feelings for each other it, it felt like it felt like a culmination of everything they went through it if it, it, mm -hmm. the, the entire thing felt earned at the end i thought yeah no, I, yeah absolutely yeah, I think that relationship works really well, especially with how, like, they're there for each other and how, like, they themselves feel like monsters given what they were forced to do with Jill, with being aligned with uh, the the other country I can't remember the name of and being forced to uh, kill people at Shiva and with Clive, with him supposedly thinking of killing his own brother. And I think it's a really good relationship with how they bond with each other based on both how they 
how they obviously did have uh, some feelings towards each other as childhood, but also how they help each other get over their current trauma as well and move on from that. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of wanted to bring up something about the ending. I don't know if you guys want to talk about the ending. Okay. Yet, yeah, we can. Yeah, yeah, I'm good with that. So something I thought was really interesting was at, at the end you have like you know you have a world now without magic and the the kids are like you know i've been reading the book final fantasy (laughs) and they're like like oh if only i could use magic Uh." Mm -hmm. and the mom's just like oh you've been reading that book too much um and it shows that it was written by joshua Mm -hmm. so i want i want to ask um do you guys think joshua actually wrote the book so I have a I have a couple theories. I think one is that since Joshua has the power of the Phoenix, which can like bring back he can bring himself back to life, I think that's a possibility. Now I don't know like the limitations of that. I don't I I don't know how like they don't think they really elaborate on that, but I think that's a possibility. Or maybe Clive didn't die and I guess he maybe used his name for some reason, like as like a like an alias. Like kinda kinda of, kinda of how he like became a he used Sid's yeah. name. I guess, like, kind of like, so maybe, uh, I, maybe it's possible that Clive survived and wrote the book himself. Or three, Tomes wrote it. <laughs> Tomes wrote it. <laughs> here's, 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 uh, <laughs> here's another theory. The game didn't happen. I heard uh, that too, and I, I mean, I, I, I hope that's not the thing they were doing. Don't worry, it's all a dream. It's all, it was a, all a dream. dream. <laughs> not that it's a, not that it's a dream, but that. The story of the game mm-hmm. is fiction, and it was it's like that nothing book. but a book. Yeah. Yes. Which I mean, I like I said, I mean, they, they don't make it clear. I, I like I said, I, I hope that's not. It, that'd yeah. be like a Star Ocean three twist right there, oh except it's just a book instead of a video game. I don't game. think it would be as bad as a Star Ocean three twist. The Star Ocean <laughs> three twist was so bad that the that they recently came out and said like, yeah, that's not canon. <laughs> yeah. they seriously that's hilarious they seriously like in an interview was like yeah we're 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 not mm. counting that one we're not doing <laughs> so i mean like what do you, do you what do you guys think do you think that the whole thing was a book possibly uh mm. no i don't i don't think i think, so. I think so. it's i think it's kind of neat as an idea yeah. of just like oh it could be that but i believe i think that clive survived yeah and since he had uh the powers of a god in that moment he revived joshua and it oh, was yeah. joshua that wrote the book hmm, okay yeah because yeah. I, I, since, since like, it's uh, like, without you can see he does something to joshua's body when he after yeah. the otomba fight mm-hmm. so like i think uh there is a strong possibility that did happen but, but yeah i think that what we saw like with the kids was like the the distant future and that's just how they're living without magic and that, and that book just kind of carried on like with the legacy that's, that's kind of what i think it's like final fantasy 7 with red you see midgar all uh broken Boy. down destroyed. yeah yeah i like uh, that's the sort of same type of uh like open-ended uh, feeling i got from the ending of uh final fantasy 16 i think like like you don't know the character's ultimate endings but like they did accomplish what they were doing which is like creating a world like a uh, free world free from ultima mm-hmm. but overall like i think that's like all the major points of final fantasy 16 right i i think we covered oh, everything wait, the music or, uh, i guess we should talk about the music fucking oh so good <laughs> It's awesome. <laughs> I mean, I mean, find the flame alone is like yeah. the top tier. Like, I think like there are a lot of great tracks in the game. I think uh, that's especially true when you're in the in, in the icon battle. I think like there are some really really cool tracks in the game. Like, like I have that whole soundtrack on repeat yeah. on the playlist on YouTube. I just listen to it yeah. every time I go on the every time I go online. So the music was composed by Masayoshi Soken, who also does the music for Final Fantasy XIV, mm-hmm. just so you know. Nice, nice. I will say there is a lot of remixes of Prelude, or the main, or the Final Fantasy theme. Yeah, they really went, uh, which, they really went ham on that one. Which is, uh, can get older after a while, I think. 
A little bit. I mean, yeah, yeah when it's kind of like the recycling the same yeah. melody, it can get kind of... Yeah. Like, I, I like motifs. I, do, I really do. But in moderation. Yeah, it was like... Like, the way they reuse it, like, I, can't, I thought it was a bit overkill at times. Like, like, if you look at, like, another example in Final Fantasy, is like, in Final Fantasy 13, like, there's probably, like, seven or eight renditions of that yeah. title music. Like, like it's just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But, like, but overall, overall like, I think, I think, like, this is a really strong soundtrack, I think. Mm -hmm. With what we got. Definitely lives up to the legacy. It's it's definitely on par with, like, mm -hmm. some of, like, Uematsu soundtracks, like, some of his peak ones, I think. Okay. I guess the last question to mm -hmm. ask in regards to Final Fantasy 16 is Is this a Final Fantasy game? Yes. Yes, yes it is. I think I, it's I a really, mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I, I, feel, I really feel like the, the people who say otherwise, they, they, they're like kind of like gatekeeping what, yeah. they, what they believe Final Fantasy should be. Mm -hmm. Like, they're like, like, yeah. like, they, like, as if they're the authority. Like, this isn't a true Final Fantasy because I said so. Or because it doesn't well, like um it really boils down to like the, the the combat is the biggest point of contention with like oh is this a final fantasy or not like at, like final fantasy has lots of recurring elements yeah. so like, for, like like to give a hypothetical imagine if hypothetically final fantasy 16 had turn-based combat but it didn't have any other recurring features like chocobos moogles a, a character named sid and any all that stuff like by their standard would that still be final fantasy like, because it's not like Final Fantasy isn't defined by its combat. I, on the as a matter of fact, like Final Fantasy always makes it a point. To I say, like, like, from my experience looking at the series, Final Fantasy has always been de about delivering a unique experience to tell the type of stories, the motifs that it wants. Mm -hmm. the, the gameplay is serving as a facilitator for that, I think. And I think uh, another example is like, like you look at like the very first Final Fantasy, mm -hmm. and that 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 literally saved Square from bankruptcy. Yeah. So what do they do with Final Fantasy Two? They're like, let's just make a completely different game that's like yeah. almost unrecognizable. Like, like right, Final so right Fantasy, from the like Final Fantasy history has already been uh, to be experimental so that it survives. Yeah, they they didn't want to just they they didn't want to make the same game twice. Yeah. So Final Fantasy Two, regardless of yeah. its execution, is nothing like Final Fantasy One. Yeah. And so that was the kind of their um. Their, and that's, uh, that and that's essentially like that. Like, that's essentially the essence of Final Fantasy, I think. At least, mm -hmm. to me, at least from what I've experienced. Yeah, yeah. sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, like I, I feel like a big part of Final Fantasy is its willingness to change. Mm -hmm. It's its willingness to buck convention and to do its own thing. Mm -hmm. So, I feel like people who are saying this isn't final fantasy like they haven't been paying attention the final fantasy series has traditionally always you know mixed things up messed with the formula this is just another example of that mm -hmm. and and again i point out why is 16 a step too far but not 7 remake or 15 like wh what I don't know. Just it's completely seems contradi crazy. contradictory too. Like this, the logic is not. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. fit. So yeah, yeah, I think it's a silly question. Mm -hmm. It's a fair. It's a, a absolutely a Final Fantasy game. Overall, uh, I think the game, like I think it's a great game, but there are a lot of pitfalls in it. I think in regards to how it handles certain stuff, like it's balancing like is the almost obvious example of one of its pitfalls i i think it's a very good game mm -hmm. that is sometimes truly great mm -hmm. but it's just shy of true greatness overall mm -hmm. so i would say that i i probably enjoyed it more than you guys did but i do completely agree with like some of yeah. the, the pitfalls that we talked about I, I guess i guess for me it was they didn't bother me as much but i can absolutely see like i think the mm -hmm. biggest problem is boiled down to padding with like like the mandatory quests like or it's like it'll just oh it yeah yeah i forgot about yeah, that. We, i don't think we mentioned i think there that. are some parts in the story like in the main story where it does feel very padded like i think yeah. like after every major icon battle when you're it usually gets you to go through like a uh, new village you gotta get a seal and then you have to ingratiate yeah. yourself in the, in the in, i think you know, i think like... the, the the part where it felt the most mind-numbing is probably in the desert yeah 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 and, and i think another part that was kind of was also like really just too long for its own good was uh when mid first shows up shows up mm -hmm. and she's working on that ship 
and then you have to go to like three different areas to like I guess find materials or something, mm -hmm. and you got to go back to her, and then just ugh. yeah, yeah. You Stuff might like even that. call it mid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I kind of walked right into that one, didn't I? <laughs> but uh... truly, Fall Five C Sixteen is mid. <laughs> A lot of people would probably say that. But um, no, yeah, I, yeah, no, I, 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 I will. I will say like there are some people who are like FF sixteen is garbage. I'm like, like I don't think I don't, I, like I don't think it's like even at its worst. I I think it's still a good game. It's just agreed, like agreed, agreed. Like yeah. it definitely has its issues. But mm -hmm. like if you genuinely think this game is garbage, you like, haven't played a lot of games. Of here. Yeah, yeah, you I, don't know what you yeah, either exactly. haven't played a lot of games or you only play games that people think are like masterpieces. Mm -hmm. And like, then when the it's the only games you've ever played in your life are like Silent Hill 2 and Disco Elysium. Yeah. Like, you, okay, okay, maybe. But even then, it's like, come on. Yeah, like the, the hyperbole for people like that are mm -hmm. just like pissed off at this game is just is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And I think that boils down to what we were talking about, like at the beginning of like the loud vocal minority. Yeah. Like, like the people who love the game are just playing it and loving it. They're not like going mm -hmm. on the internet just like confessing how much they love it. They're just mm -hmm. playing it. Whereas the I, people that yeah. hate it, mm -hmm. I think people vastly underestimate how little people spend talking about the things that they like online. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. they, you know, I'll go to a restaurant. And I'll eat a great steak. I, and I'll, I'll just be like, yeah, that was a great steak. And I don't go online and talk about it. Right? Like, yeah, it's like, like, I don't, like, I never feel compelled to just like, just like talk about, oh, this is so good. Oh my God. I have to uh, make a series of, of tweets. I have to make a giant thread to just tell much how, how much I love you it. Mean, you know what I mean, I just, you, you mean Reddit and Game Facts threads are indicative of real life conversations? Same thing. <laughs> so, Right, but yeah, but, you know, oh, yeah, like, uh, overall, I think more vocal about yeah. negative things. Mm -hmm. It's just the way we are. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I, I think it's, a, I think it's a great game. Mm -hmm. I, like, like I said, I, I agree with all, like, everything we talked about. I totally mm -hmm. agree. But I, I think it's for me. I guess they didn't bother me as much. Mm -hmm. And plus, I mean, I guess maybe also coming off of fifteen, that this is just so much better in every way. So mm -hmm. maybe that also. You kinda... know, I, I'll grant you that. Yeah. I feel like if I play 15 i think it will make me appreciate 16 even more and i do mm -hmm. like 16 again like i said 16 is very good it is very good mm -hmm. absolutely and like and some parts of it are even like like that part with bahama is an 11 out of 10 yeah like well, yeah no exactly like you know again game, i just feel like the, the game is just shy yeah. of being overall great the game but, got its peaks yeah. and valleys so yeah mm-hmm so but, yeah, you know, that, that might I also. 15, I'll get back to you after I beat fifteen, and mm -hmm. then I'll be like, okay, yeah, you were right. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest. I think that you. I, I mean, yeah, Final Fantasy fifteen is technically better now, so. Better than it was. That's not yeah. really saying much. Bar is not very. Yeah. <laughs> bar is not very high. So um, but yeah, for me, sixteen, great game. Um, yeah. and I I just I enjoyed the hell out of it. Oh yeah, overall, I say 16 is like one of the better Final Fantasy games I played. It's probably mm -hmm. on the t uh, upper tier of the Final Fantasy you games I played. Nine. Go back and play nine. Yeah. Like uh, Final Fantasy Tactics is still my favorite Final Fantasy game, but me too. Yeah. Tactics is have... also my yeah. favorite. But you really I need still... to play nine. Mm -hmm. Nine is one of the best. I still haven't even played Tactics actually. Believe it or not. <laughs> Sounds like well, I'm, I'm sure I'm, I'm late. I mean, they are. They, there are rumblings they, and yeah. rumors that they're going to do a, a remake. Re yeah, re-release. Remaster. Oh, remaster. That'd be pretty cool. I mean, they did one for Tactics Ogre, so yeah. I mean, it would be cool to have yeah. it for Final Fantasy Tactics, especially since mm -hmm. like the PSP version have the slowdown problem. So it'd be, yeah. it'd be good to have to play that version without the slowdown problem. And it also yeah. sounds like I got to jump on that Final Fantasy 14 train mm -hmm. at some point. And, you know, and it, and it's interesting too because 16 was directly inspired by the main creative force behind mm -hmm. Tactics. Mm -hmm. I'll, you I, know, can I forget see, his like... name, but um, I think it's Yatsumi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like his writing it inspired a lot of 16's yeah. writing. That's Same pretty... with uh, Final Fantasy 14 Heaven's Ward, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which you know, written by the guy who wrote Heaven's Ward wrote. FF16. Like I said, he's very, very inspired by um, Yatsumi.
I think that's all for today's video. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this uh, long discussion of Final Fantasy XVI. Uh, this is Peter Cyrus from Science Gaming Spot signing off. Take care, everyone. Bye.